Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Physics Surgery Originals and I brought forward to you a challenge uh, in the topic of viscosity and combined with a multi-concept of rotational and irrotational flow. So here's the disc which is on an oily table edge and it's being pulled off the table edge by an external agent and it's going to fall off teaching us a lot of concept. Okay, so let's go ahead with the formal wording of the question. So here it is. It's a more than one correct type of a situation where the information is given on the top and then the options are given at the bottom. Okay, you want to have a try on your own, just pause the video here, have a fair read, give it a try and then come back to uh, see the concept uh, explanation and also the solution. Okay, so here we go. A uniform circular laminar disc is on the top of a horizontal table top there is a thin layer of oil between the lamina and the table. So this is the top view of that particular thing. We could see a lot of oil on this and this is the edge, table edge, okay? In this picture, the acceleration due to gravity is into the board, okay? Right. The lamina is being pulled by an external agent by applying a horizontal force uh, with a constant velocity V0 and at T equal to zero, the table edge is the tangent to the lamina. So this edge is exactly tangent to this lamina at T equal to zero. And at t equal to capital T, the table edge coincides with the diameter of the lamina. So this moves to the right and this edge becomes diameter. During the period t equal to 0 to t equal to capital T, mark the incorrect statements among the options given below. Assume the liquid layer below the disc is steady and laminar and the liquid outside the disc is at rest and there are no edge effect forces on the disc. Okay, so whatever forces are there, that is due to the oil which is underneath the disc and not around it. Okay, all the oil that is there around it is assumed to be at rest and also the liquid layers which are below this particular disc are flowing in a steady and a laminar manner. The viscous force on the disc by liquid obeys Newton's law of viscosity. Okay, so Newton's law of viscosity is something that you should be as a JE aspirant knowing about. Okay, so options, force exerted by the external agent increases from zero to T seconds. Distance between center of mass of the lamina and the effective point of application of normal reaction on the disc from the oil increases. Viscous force exerted by oil on the lamina falls by 50% during that period. Option D, the flow of oil underneath the lamina close to its center where its velocity gradient is also considered uniform is irrotational. Okay, so these are the four options that you are supposed to uh, mark the incorrect statements about. Okay, so let's move ahead with the concept application first. Now, so I have drawn the three pictures at t equal to zero, t equal to arbitrary instant where the disc you could see in the top view is going off the table edge. And at t equal to t, the table edge exactly coincides with the diameter of the disc, okay? In any arbitrary instant, there will be two forces. One is the external agent pulling this one towards right. And also there will be oil layer which is in contact and that would apply a viscous force de denoted by Fv. Since he said in the question that the velocity is constant, therefore net force on this in a horizontal direction should be zero. So the magnitude of external force should be equal to the viscous force. And the value of the viscous force, because it is a Newtonian liquid, right? That's what he said. Oil is obeying Newton's law of viscosity. It's called Newtonian fluid. It should be given by eta into A dV by dz, where eta is the coefficient of viscosity and A is the area of contact. So whatever area that you are talking about in contact, at any arbitrary instant, that area comes into picture, okay, right. Therefore, as the time progresses, your eta and the value of dv by dz would be same, but the area will change. You could see highest area of contact is at t equal to zero and the least is at t equal to t. So Fv is directly proportional to the area of contact. Now, from t equal to zero to t equal to t seconds, the area and its velocity profile exactly halves. I can make a statement that whatever velocity profile that you have at t equal to zero, the way, the way it varies and all that, right? It's not very simple. Remember, each of these areas are moving with different, different uh, values of velocities, but whatever happens in t equal to zero, at t equal to t, exactly half of it happens. 
So I can bravely say that the amount of force that was there at t equal to zero to t equal to capital T should be exactly half. So that without solving by using symmetry, I should be able to uh, talk about. Okay, so that 50% option is a correct option. Okay, now also the torque on that entire disc should be zero. So as you are watching, the disc is not rotating, right? It's just translating and that too with constant velocity. Therefore, since torque is zero, the value of normal reaction uh, wherever you are going to put it. Remember, normal reaction is a distributed force. You have to place it. Remember, N should be equal to mg. And not only that, it should pass through mg. Otherwise, imagine normal reaction is slightly to the left or right of this mg and any arbitrary instant. Then there should be an unbalanced couple or a torque and the disk should rotate, which is not correct, right? You see that the disk is not rotating. So normal reaction will adjust itself in a smaller area also, right? Wherein it will pass through the mg. So you should not say whatever is the area of contact to that at that particular center of mass of that particular area of contact, it will pass through. That's not correct. Normal reaction will self adjust its distribution in such a way that it passes through mg so as to keep uh, the torque equal to zero. Okay, so we have actually almost done with the three options. So let's go back and see the first three and the fourth one. We'll go ahead and do it in the next page. Okay, so force exerted by the external agent should decrease. So this is a wrong option. This is a wrong option and therefore it's the correct key, right? So this this would be a correct key there. Right. Next, distance between the center of mass of the lamina and the effective point of application of normal reaction on the disc from the oil increases. That means they're going farther apart. It is incorrect because the normal reaction at every instant will pass through the center of mass uh, or mg because the torque has to be zero. So this is an incorrect statement and therefore the correct key. Viscous force exerted by oil on the lamina falls by 50%, which is a correct statement and therefore you should not mark it as an answer. The last one, whether the flow of the oil underneath is rotational or rotational, let's understand that. OK, so we'll go ahead. Now, the thing is, uh, one of the misconceptions that students usually have is that if the flow is, can you see on the right hand side, I have drawn an exaggerated version of the disc on the top with the external agent pushing it towards right. Now, this is a side view. Right. In this, the gravity is downward. OK, right. So uh, the layer of the liquid, which is exaggerated thickness here, would be at rest on the table. And by the time it, you reach the disk layers, it would be moving fastest. So there is a velocity gradient, as you could see, that applies the shear force or shear stress on the disk. Now, this type of velocity, you would say that it is translational type, right? Uh, uh, you would say all these are straight lines. So you might think it is irrotational, but it is not. Okay, any velocity which is of this kind is actually a rotational kind of velocity. So let me explain more clearly. So if you take a simple example of two velocity profiles, one in which the velocity is the same throughout, can you see in the top of this figure, the velocity is, let's say, the same. And you place a small object, let's say a smiley like this, that smiley on the top layer of the smiley and bottom layer of the smiley, there will be same velocity, right? So the smiley doesn't rotate. It keeps going straight through, right? You can think these smileys are fluid particles, DM elements of the fluid. So if the top of the smiley and the bottom of the smiley are governed by the same velocity, there won't be any rotating effect on the smiley. So this type of velocity profile corresponds to irrotational uh, velocity profile. Okay. Whereas when velocity is straight lines, these velocity lines are straight, remember. But if the velocity has, is having a gradient, like the gradient means there is a variation in the direction perpendicular to it. Then when you place this smiley here, the top head of the smiley would be moving faster and the uh, chin of the smiley is going to move slower, causing the smiley to rotate like this, even in the straight line velocity map. This type of uh, fluids, which um, elements which are rotating, uh, correspond to a situation of a rotational flow. So, is the flow laminar? What does it laminar mean? Laminar means there is no intermixing of the layers. This layer never mixes with this layer, never mixes with this layer. That's called laminar. But is it irrotational? No, it is rotational flow. Okay, right. So, you may have situations where the liquid is actually rotating. And you can have a irrotational flow. So the word rotational and irrotational is not related to whether the um, 
fluid elements are um, or 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 there is an omega to the system or there is a straight line velocities it is not that if you leave an object in that particular velocity profile if the object rotates about itself that means you sit on one point and watch the next immediate point if there is an angular momentum associated with it then we understand it as the um, rotational flow okay so that means if you sit on this point and watch this point there is an angular momentum associated with it you sit on this one and watch this one there is an angular momentum okay so you may have situation where omega of all the fluid elements imagine this is a rotation viscometer where you have a liquid between two rotating cylinders and all the layers of this liquid have same omega let's suppose omega is not varying with distance then even though the liquid is rotating here entire liquid the flow is going to be irrotational okay you want to understand more about the irrotational and rotational flow in a rotation viscometer i've already produced quite a, uh, i think two or three videos on this particular topic links are in the description below please do go there and uh, try to watch those videos one is the originals video another one is the irodo problem that i have solved giving you enough uh, um, understanding of that particular topic okay so uh, that's one thing second important thing is in the future i'll be producing a video on olympiad workout series it's a concept not there in je advance right how do you directly tell by looking at a particular uh, flow profile that is given whether the flow is irrotational or rotational it's by the concept of vorticity vorticity is a quantity that helps us decide the flow being rotational or irrotational i'll try to produce a challenge and explain the concept of vorticity for olympiad aspirants in the coming video okay please do stay tuned and in case you have liked this particular video uh, you please go through the rest of the series that i have already produced links of all these important playlists are in the description below try to play them in loop one after another each and every video is very informative and you will definitely gain some subject from it whether you are a student or a, a physics lover okay so if you like the video it will be pressed by youtube algorithm to more number of audience and then i'll be getting more subscribers thereby growing my channel and providing me with the motivation i require to continue this work and please do share it with your friends ask them to come and subscribe to my channel and in case you have not subscribed i uh, humbly request you to do so and stay uh, take care stay safe and see you in the next video